Greetings and salutations to all you movie lovers out there, and welcome to our first Hollywood Lowdown for the new year. Woo! I am excited. And what a year it's going to be. Already we've had enough scandals and behind-the-scenes cinematic dramas to run the same time span as a Peter Jackson movie. And we've only just begun. All our favorite shows are returning mid-season. We've already had a Star Wars movie to debate over. Meryl Streep has already racked up an Oscar nomination for something she's in. It doesn't matter. She just has to stand there and they give her one. And X-Files is back in our lives again to divide fans of the old versus fans of the nostalgic. I figured we'd take time to acknowledge the supposed bad film. But why, you may ask, do I use finger quotes for the word bad? Well, because when you do that, everything you say from then on sounds extra smart. And also because what's bad these days doesn't mean it's necessarily the worst. With a film called The Disaster Artist making headlines and opening to a barrage of praise from critics and fans and, get this, Oscar buzz? I know, right? I think it's important to note that just because Oscar ignores your movie doesn't mean you have a loser. The Disaster Artist is the story of real-life filmmaker Tommy Wiseau. Wiseau, Russo, Tomato, Tomatozo. A six-foot European something or other director who's known for his magnificently awful opus, The Room. The Room has since become a cult classic because of its awfulness. Festivals have been held for it, parodies have been made, books have been written, and now it's the subject of a major motion picture with stars Seth Rogen and James Franco at the helm. But of course, this sort of phenomena with a film or a series of films is nothing new. In fact, many movies have inexplicably gained cult success because of just being so bad, so remarkably bad, that they are in some ways extremely entertaining. Remember Ed Wood starring Johnny Depp? the Tim Burton movie about Ed Wood, one of the worst directors of all time. This movie has since made Wood and his films cult classics, like The Room Plan 9 and a couple other Ed Wood movies like Bride of the Monster and Glenn or Glenda have been quoted, parodied, paid homage to, and have been the mention and subject of many movies and shows. It's talked about on Seinfeld and has made an appearance on The X-Files. And strangely enough, it's been given a whole new respect, mainly because of Burton's Ed Wood showcasing just who Ed Wood was and what he went through. I myself consider Plan 9 from Outer Space to be a classic. It's god-awful, but so much fun to watch with friends. Often drunk, maybe with some other substances during those college years, but let's not open that door. So bad their good movies seem to be a communal experience. Hell, it's what made the success for the show Mystery Science Theater 3000 and their much later work known as Rift Tracks. Adding your own off-the-wall commentary with your fellow movie watchers can make some of the most gut-wrenching movies watchable. That same sort of magic has given birth to Sharknado, a movie so bad it was talked about for weeks to come after its premiere on Sci-Fi. So much so, it was eventually released in theaters because of its popularity, and now, four sequels later, Ian Ziering and Tara Reid are still cashing in and managing to keep a somewhat movie career going. I'll most likely watch The Room or Plan 9 again, but I doubt I'll ever watch movies like Prometheus, The Arrival, Independence Day, Resurgence, or Life. And of course, I'll be fine with never seeing a Star Wars prequel again, most notably The Phantom Menace, a movie more horrible than one of my segments edited by John Luck. But I know I'll be drinking blue milk and celebrating Life Day with that good old or bad Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> So while Oscar rings in this new year of cinema with genetic dramas, usually feel-good stories, and overblown politically influenced sat pictures, I'll be visiting my classic Roger Corman collection and cruising through Netflix and Prime for that next hidden gem of a bad movie gone good. So, until we meet again, cinema peeps, this is Mark Macrina wishing you a happy new year, happy movie watching, and don't forget to watch new episodes of our show, The Franken Zone. It's no longer just yearly. Yeah.